you this morning. Amen. Stretch your hands to her. Father, we just thank you for Sherry, God, that you just flow through her, Lord, your love and goodness and your word, God. We just are eager to hear and see what you're saying through her this morning. And we received your gift and goodness and your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Let me get set up here. Got to have my water. I'm a bit thirsty this morning. Well, um, so Philip said Pastor Terry and Pastor Kim are out of town. They're actually on vacation, guys. <laughs> we are so happy for them. They're going to enjoy some time with family. One of their daughters graduated from from college this week and so that's amazing that was McKenna and so we're so thankful to hear all that so you guys send them a little shout out congrats and also uh, uh, they have an anniversary this month so just re- just a reminder so um, I have a couple of things I want to tell you guys about before we jump in first of all we have a very awesome treat this summer um, and uh, Pastor Terry is starting a summer Bible school for adults, summer Bible school, and it's going to start on uh, Tuesday nights, June 13th, and uh, it'll be from 6.45 to 8 p.m. Guys, seriously, this, if you've not sat under some teaching, Bible teaching, and I'm not just talking about pulpit Sunday morning, I'm talking about some deep teaching from Pastor Terry. It's very, very powerful. Um, He is going to start with his latest book, God's Armor Bearer for the Next Generation. Very powerful. And so uh, the book is $15. Um, The course is open, of course, to everyone. But if you want to get the book to, to follow along, you need to do that. That would be awesome. If you want to sign up, you're going to want to get with Miss Christy, I believe, has left the room. So, but, <laughs> but anyway, you know Christy, so get with her. And y'all, it will be so powerful. Tuesday nights starting June 13th. Don't miss it. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. I've been so excited to tell you guys this. Happy Mother's Day. I love you guys. Hey, we have a gift. Would all the mothers please stand up? All the mothers, we have a gift for you. Stay standing, mamas. Come on, you powerful women of God. You powerful mothers and grandmothers. Yep, we're going to get them out. We're going to get them out. There's, lo- there's lots of ladies on this side. Can we get some help? Can we get some help? Men, can we get some help on that side of the room? Yeah. So what you have in your hand, this is so cute. I love it. It is a muffin, and it says, we would be muffin without you. (laughs) We would be muffin without you. Isn't that adorable? So cute. Christy did a beautiful job. You can thank Christy for all her work on that. Thank you, thank you. If you don't eat muffins, you can share. (laughs) All right, do all the ladies have a muffin? Okay, first of all, I love you and I bless you. I speak blessings over every mother in this room. I'm proud of you. I just want to say that to all of you mothers. I'm proud of you. I don't care where you are in your walk in life and as a mother, whether you're, you've been a mother forever, whether you're a brand new mother, whether you don't have your kids right now, whether you do have your kids right now, whether your kids are grown and gone and off and have their own kids, I'm so proud of you. You have shown great courage. It takes so much courage to be a mom, right? Some of you moms that have been a mom for a long time, you know the deep courage that it takes to be a mom. Um, the ability to allow your kids to grow up and launch on their own and then stand back and go, God, I hope you make good decisions. (laughs) I've prayed for you, and I'm going to keep praying for you. But, but, you know, sometimes they just make decisions that we don't have control over. 
And so uh, I'm proud of you for showing such incredible courage. Amen? Amen. Well, so this morning, we're going to talk about being a powerful person. We're going to talk about being a powerful woman. And men, don't turn the channel. Because I promise you, you are going to receive something in this message. God has deposited something in me to deliver to you today. He, he loves you intensely and desires that you become fully powerful and healthy in the Lord. Amen? So let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We are so grateful for the price that Jesus paid for us. We are so grateful for everything that you have done, where we have not deserved, Lord, but that you have given in spite of us. God, I thank you that you help us to receive that love from you. Help us to walk in it. I thank you that your voice is clear this morning. Thank you that you speak and that you pierce every single heart in this room. That the atmosphere changes, Father, because of your presence and no one else, God. You alone, you alone, you are so beautiful, Father. And we thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing today. And bless these women in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I, I want to kind of start out by talking about um, what we're dealing with right now. You guys, you know there is a war for your identity. There is a war. You were born in, for such a time as this. Pastor Terry talked about this last Sunday. I don't know if you remember when he said, God chose the time the date, the season that you were born in. And he chose you to be born in this time on the earth, in this culture, in this nation, in this state, in this city, in this very place. He chose it on purpose. You're not an accident. It was not a random selection. You wound up here. God knew everything about you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Everything. Not only that, but he placed a purpose inside of you to be delivered to the earth through you. And this is for everyone in this room. And I, you know, we say this stuff, but guys, it is so important that we grasp it, especially in this time and in this season. There is an assault. On family. There is a huge assault on family. I, you know, I, I've heard people say the last days revival is going to happen in the young people, and that is, that is true. But I'm going to tell you that it's going to be in the entire family. The entire family. We are a kingdom family, and we are set in this earth to operate as a family, not as a business. Okay, not as uh, competitors. We are family. We are people who love and, and, and challenge and, and cheer for one another. Amen? That's what families do. You know, when a five-year-old acts like a five-year-old, do we kick them out because they're acting five? No, we laugh. we like, no, we're not going to do that today. <laughs> Let's do something else. So I want, I want to challenge you that when there are people in your kingdom family that challenge you, that you just bring them in closer. Bring them in closer. Because the religious would want to say, get away from me. That's what the religious spirit wants to say. It wants to say, no, I don't have anything to do with you. You're kind of weird. But you know what a kingdom family says? It says, come closer. Come closer. I want to hold you closer. That's kingdom family. And there's an assault on family right now. In fact, there is such an assault on family that there's an assault on femininity. Huge assault on femininity, on the female. 
of course it's on the mail also, but I want to tell you there is a confusion that has come up on this land. And it is all out war for who you are, for your identity. And you know, you see it every single place you go. People identifying this way, people identifying that way, people, whatever it is, okay? It, it doesn't matter. Who are you? I want you to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? See, God had an original design, original blueprint, and we're going to talk about it. But in this time, this time that we are in, do you know that, that the book of Esther uses that phrase, such a time as this? And I don't know if you know the story, and we're not going to minister on Esther, but I'm going to give you a little backstory so you know where you are in time, okay? So in the story of Esther, there is a young Jewish woman um, who has an uncle named Mordecai. Mordecai was caring for her. He was her champion. Thank God, men, for you who champion women. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And there was a king, Azarius. And Azarius had had a tiff with his current queen, his wife. And he went out to choose another queen. And he called all the women in from the entire region. And he chose one that he liked the best. And she was to be prepared to be his queen. And she went through a great preparation. Her name was Esther. Her uncle was Mordecai. And like I said, Mordecai had been with her and cared for her and helped her. And there were people that helped Esther prepare for this time to be the queen to King Azarius. But guys, there was a high nobleman at the time, and his name was Haman. And Haman was the high nobleman to the king. He was the king's right hand. His name was Haman. And Haman had it out for Mordecai. In fact, Mordecai happened to have such amazing timing of the Holy Spirit to be in the right place at the right time when he overheard some guards plotting to kill the king. And Mordecai went and told this to the king, and those guards were eliminated. Now, in that time, that, there was a great um, thing building between Mordecai and Haman. Haman began to hate Mordecai and everything he represented. Haman was out to destroy not only Mordecai, but the entire race of the Jewish people, which was Esther's people. And so why was she born? She was born as a daughter of God to deliver the word to the king, save her people. But there was a voice there talking in the king's ear, and his name was Haman. Do you know what Haman means? Do you know what the word Haman means in the Hebrew? It means noise. It means confusion. Noise, confusion, clamoring. Does that sound like a time like this? A lot going on. Haman was out to stop what what God had put into place. But through <clears throat> miracles, through miracles, God basically did a setup. <laughs> he did a setup. And, and Mordecai was found, had found favor with King Azarius only because... God actually created a situation where King Azarius went to Haman, bad guy, 
and said, what shall I do for the man who has saved me, who has done great things for me? And guess what? Haman thought, he's talking about me. I'm pretty bad. He's talking about me. So I'm going to give, I'm going to suggest the best thing possible. Right? But he didn't know. The king was referring to Mordecai. And so Haman said, oh, you should give him the kingdom. You should, you should give him what he desires. You should make him your right hand. You should uh, promote him. And Haman was proud. He was so full of pride, and he was thinking of himself only. Does that sound familiar? Thinking of himself. He was noise. He was clamoring. He was confusion. And he was thinking of only himself and how he would be exalted. Does that sound like somebody else? And he said, King, you should promote him. King said, Great, go get Mordecai. We're going to promote him. <laughs> I mean, wow. Haman was furious. He was furious. And he set up gallows to hang Mordecai. But he didn't get to hang him because the king promoted Mordecai. And bye-bye Haman. Bye-bye Haman. So this morning, we're going to say bye-bye to Haman. No more noise. No more confusion. No more clamoring. It will not have our ear anymore. Amen? No more. No more. I just, ladies, you have to know who you are. You have to. If you want to get over in this world, if you want to be victorious in this earth, as Jesus has given us such a great gift in himself, why would he pay such a great price for us to walk in such pathetic fear? Why would he, why would he pay such a great price for us to walk in a way that we feel less than? It's not God. It's not God. And guess what? This room is full of Mordecai's. Full of them. I'm so, I'm so blessed. So let's talk about God's original blueprint. His original design, let's go to Genesis 1, 27. Now, I always use the New King James. It's just kind of my thing. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about what he originally intended. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. What did God intend? Male and female. Did he decide that there was 500 other genders? No. I'm just going to be clear, y'all. I'm being real with you, okay? Either there's truth or there's not truth, and I'm going to speak the truth. See, tr your truth is only your opinion. Truth is the word of God. Truth is what God says. We don't get to change it based on our circumstances, who we're in relationship with, how do we feel about things, what kind of day we're having today. We don't get to decide what our truth is. The truth does not change. Guess what? Gravity does not change. If you go, I don't believe in gravity, and you walk right off the cliff, well, <laughs> gravity doesn't, I mean, sorry. <laughs> sorry it didn't work out for you. <clears throat> You walked right off that cliff because you didn't believe in gravity. I'm so sorry, but you had a chance. <laughs> Boy, that sounds cold, doesn't it? I don't mean it that way. I love you guys. I love, every, I, I love this world, that we, these people in this world, but I don't love this world. The system of this world is failing us, failing. So God's original intent is that he created us, male and female, first and Here's the thing. That's the blueprint to know we are God's children. He created us, and he loves us, and he created us this way to keep us healthy and whole and good. He made it good. Why does, why does the enemy hate women so much? Think about it. There is honestly an assault 
on women. There is honestly an assault on women, and I, I, I'm, I'm not one to be, let's stand up for women's rights, because I don't need them. I have God. What do I need those for? I know who I am. I don't need that. I'm just being real with you guys. You see, the enemy hated us from the very beginning because in Genesis 3, 14 through 15, when the serpent came to Eve and tricked her, this is what God said afterward. Genesis three fourteen through 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, this is to the serpent, this is the enemy, you are cursed m- more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And... I will put enmity between you and the woman. Didn't say you and the man. Between you and the woman. Now, we know the enemy hates men too, okay? We're not deceived into thinking that. But this is a special thing. It says between you and the woman and between your seed, the enemy's seed, and her seed, which is man. See, the enemy does not like that you birth things. He does not like what you have done and who you are. He shall bruise your head, but guess what, ladies? You stomp him. He's under your feet. He's under your feet, and and he shall bruise your heel. Listen, you stomp him, he barely touches you. I'm just telling you, that's how the divine order works. The divine order of our Father God is that you were created in his likeness to be like him. Men are just like him. Women are just like him. We just demonstrate different qualities about God himself. It's interesting because when, when we talk about God as a provider, it's a typical male description. As a protector, it's a beautiful. I love this about how God's word talks about those things, and that's a typical description of men. I love this about men. It's so beautiful. It's such a divine thing. And when he talks about the Holy Spirit, talks about the comforter, the teacher, comforter and teacher. Do you know that you have a nurturing gift from God that's inside of you, whether you know it or not, ladies? It's there. It's there to birth things and to grow things. Birth and grow. Now, maybe you are not a mom. You know what? You are a spiritual mom. You're a spiritual being. And there's going to be somebody that looks to you for direction. There's going to be someone who looks to you for direction. And that sounds like a mom to me. God's called us to walk in that. He's called us to walk in that. See, God created us, ladies and men, to know who we are, to know that we belong to him. If you really believe it in your heart, not in your head, in your heart, if you really believe it in your heart, you will never compare yourself to a single person because you're so thankful for what God has done for you. Because you're so grateful and you're so happy when you see the glory of God on other women. You are so grateful. Comparison is a tool of the enemy and it's a liar. It will always tell you you're not enough. 
I'll get to that in a minute. You see, we are setting a standard. We are the thermostat. We set the temperature. The room then responds to what we have decided the temperature is. Ask any man if mama's happy. If mama ain't happy, what? Ain't nobody happy. (laughs) Guess what? Men can do that too. It's their gifting also. But I'm speaking to you to know who you are. When you walk in a room, you decide, I carry the living God inside of me, and it's not a pride thing. No, it's not an arrogant thing. It's like a, a tender. You didn't earn it. How could you be proud? You didn't earn a bit of it. You can, if, you're, if you think, I've done so much for God, well, turn that right off. Because guess what? It's not enough. It'll never be enough. But we have been given so great a gift that we did not deserve and that's why we have to know who we are and at the same time walk in humility and humility will always just love people and not compare and not walk in strife humility will always say my opinion doesn't matter i know you guys are like what (laughs) my opinion doesn't matter It's not that important. Guess whose opinion is important? God's opinion. I cannot afford, and I love this. This is what Bill Johnson says. I cannot afford to have a thought in my head about me that God does not have. I really can't afford it. It's too pricey. It's expensive. It costs too much to have thoughts in your head that are not of God. Think about it. How many times have you thought something negative about yourself and it just brought you down? It just made you feel terrible. It's not God. God will always, always encourage and exalt you. He'll strengthen you. He'll correct you. But it's not. Correction is not to bring you down. It's to call you up. Amen? So we set a standard. We're the thermostat. We are not the thermometer. We set the atmosphere. We are not conformers. We are reformers. Amen? We're not conformers. Let's look at Romans 12 too, and let's see what it says about that. And do not be conformed. Say that. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? The Word of God. The Word of God is truth. And I will tell you, y'all, I've been walking with the Lord for... How old am I? <laughs> a long time. We'll just say I'm over 50. Okay, that's enough. Um, but I have been walking with the Lord since I was 15 years old. Now, I, I'm going to be straight with you. I have not always walked as I should walk. I was so fired up when I got born again at 15. But I lived out of my emotions. And I didn't have the roots that I needed. I was full of fire, but I didn't have all the roots of the word and the renewing of the mind. And so when I went to college, I fell away from the Lord. I just went crazy, to be honest. Just, I don't know. (laughs) Made some really bad decisions. The Lord in his mercy came and retrieved me personally. And I'm so grateful. But you know, that right there helps me understand I don't earn anything. You can't earn it. Everything that you do by your Christian activity is not to gain something. You've already been given every single thing, everything. So we have to renew our mind with the word. We have to. It's truth. It's not our truth that matters. It's the truth that matters. 
so we don't be conformed to this world. By the renew, uh, we be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me explain that. That's kind of interesting wording. But when we renew our mind, our desires become like his desires. Because as we're going after him, not in knowledge, but in spirit and in truth, you can learn about God all your life. I have a great friend. She learned about God all her life, became a pastor of a church, and realized one day she didn't know God at all. No relationship. She had done very sophisticated writings and articles and papers and all this research on God and, and church history and did not know him. And so we don't know him by how much we know. We know him by how much we receive. And so we feed on the word. We swallow the word. It goes down in us. It transforms us. We become more and more like him. And then, through that, we manifest his desires. So my desires are now his desires. It's interesting. If I start seeing that I have a desire that doesn't line up with the word of God, I'm like, nope. No thanks. No thanks. I'm such a freak for finding people to get born again. It's just, <laughs> I live for it. I live for it. Live for it. I can't think of anything I would rather do in my whole life. Anything at all. Nothing. Hawaii does not compare. Okay, nothing compares to seeing a life transformed out of darkness and into light. Nothing compares. And so my desires are becoming more like him, and he still is transforming me, and we always grow. We never get there. We always grow. The day you think you got there is the day that you are deceived. Okay. All right, let's, let's get a little further on. So do not be conformed. You see, you can't be in love with the world and be in love with God. It doesn't match. Ephesians says that we're rooted and grounded in love. So how do we stand? We have to have love. How do we have love? How do you learn how to love? You have to be loved first. If you never experienced love, you don't really know how to love because you're basing it on your emotions and what your truth is. But when you love out of the pure love of God and what he's done for you, it's so easy to love, even difficult people. <laughs> That's my specialty. I love difficult people. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. <laughs> I love them. I don't know. I just, I just see something in them. And I, it's like when you can see that they're just hurt, they're just wounded, that's all. And they're just self-protecting. That's all it is. That's all it is with difficult people. So we have to learn how to be daughters of God first before we become mothers. If you don't know how to be a good daughter, I can assure you you don't know how to be a good mother. Knowing how to be a good daughter is knowing how to receive Love from your father and being okay with the fact that don't get caught up in I don't deserve it, Lord, I don't deserve it. I don't well of course you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. He didn't love you because you did something. He loves you because he himself is love. And he can't do anything but love you. I know it blows your mind. Uh, it blows my mind. Still, yes. So when we learn to be loved, we learn how to love. Romans 8, 14. Are y'all hot? 
Y'all are cold. Okay. Romans 8, 14. Just checking. I'm checking on y'all. Okay. Um, For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, this is Romans 8, 14 through 16, these are the sons of God. I do want to encourage you, ladies, this is not, this not, doesn't mean men. This means children of God, okay? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. I'm going to come back to that. But you received the spirit of adoption. You are no longer an orphan, by the way. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Papa God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. It's a revelation. It's something that's got to hit down here. It's not something that just like, oh yeah, I'm a child of God. No, I belong to the King of Kings. I belong to the great I am. What? When you're a child of the great I am, what do you think? How good are we to our kids and we are just earthly? How much more good is he to his kids and he's divine? He is God. <laughs> it's so amazing. I, I can't make you get this. <laughs> I like to say this. I work in technology and I go, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you just got it. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. Listen, you, you, you've got to root yourself in his love. And I promise you, as you do, it will hit you and you will explode with love. I just, sometimes I look at Anne and I see the love of God. If you've ever been around her when she prays for someone, the compassion of God hits her so hard. She weeps, and it, it's just so intense. That is a woman who has a revelation of being loved. It's not a woman who goes, I know how to love. It's a woman who knows she is loved. And then it manifests. It's powerful when we get this. So it says you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear is the thing that keeps you in bondage. And here are some of the bondages, ladies, that I see on women, okay? We're going to just touch a couple of them. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm too much. My voice isn't important. I'll let somebody else talk. Nobody cares. These are some of the lies that women believe. I'm not good enough. I cannot tell you how that phrase repeats itself over and over and over. And I feel the presence of the Lord. Because I'm telling you, you don't have to be good enough. He made you righteous. No one in your environment gets to decide who you are. Nobody. Jesus already decided it. And he bankrupt heaven to prove it to you. And all you have to do is receive it. Thank you, Father. Fear will keep you so trapped up that you will not release your purpose in the earth because you are terrified to do anything wrong. Do you know how many young ladies won't do stuff because they're afraid they're going to do something wrong, they're going to say something wrong, they're going to sound stupid, they're going to look stupid? They don't go out for sports. They don't go out for whatever. They don't run for their little class office. They don't do whatever it is. They don't do it because they're afraid they're going to look bad. It's a lie of the enemy. 
I, I don't doubt, I don't doubt for a minute that men struggle with this too. I don't doubt for a minute. But I want to tell you the enemy is after something in you women. He's after something because he knows if he can stop you, you will not birth or grow anything. You will stay to yourself and believe you cannot do anything. Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption to Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will and the praise of his glorious grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved, just like you are, exactly like you are, accepted, fully accepted, nothing to prove. You see, you can never gain it. You can never work for it. You can never quit smoking and get there. You can never start tithing and get there. You can never start preaching and get there. You can never share Jesus with somebody and get there. It's only by receiving. It's faith. It's a gift. That's all it is. It's simple yet complex. Listen, he smoked the enemy. He absolutely eliminated and obliterated anything the enemy could possibly do in this earth against you. And, but you get to choose. Through love you are complete. And if that verse does not tell you that you have been well equipped, then I don't know what verse is going to tell you that. Either you believe I'm equipped I am enough because the word of God says it. Or you just don't believe it. It's that simple. Let it hit your heart. Let it hit your heart. He's so good. You can't, I keep saying it because I'm telling you it's in the church. And it's so prevalent. People want to earn something. This is not the world's system. God's system is different. Love completes us. Love completes us. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Oh, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, through the word of God, you may be partakers of the divine nature. Listen, I, I really have one message for you today. Just believe him. Just believe him. It's true. Everything he says about you is true. The only thing that keeps us back is what we believe about ourselves. I'm going to say it again. The only thing that will hold you back is what you believe about yourself. And if your belief system is broken and you always believe you're always going to have this problem over and over you'll always have this problem over and over. You get to choose. It's the power of choice. I've had to live this so many ways, so many ways. Things I believed about myself. Some little, simple, stupid things and some big, complex things. 
See, Moses had to deal with the same thing. He didn't believe that he was the guy. He was like, I stutter. I, I can't represent you, Lord. I stutter. Are you sure it's me? And the Lord is saying, I'm sure it's you. I'm sure it's you. <laughs> I'm sure it's you. Don't let your belief about yourself stop you. Self-limiting beliefs will destroy everything in your life. If you think you're not a good mother, you won't be a good mother. If you think you'll never get there, you'll never get there. You're going to have to raise the bar. Raise the bar. Listen, you can't do it in your own effort. So I'm not trying to get you to effort for this. I'm trying to get you to lean into the presence of the Lord and know that he really is real and he really believes in you. And he wants the best for you. I didn't get to get, every, get to everything this morning. But I do know the Lord spoke to you. I know that he said something to you this morning because I trust him. I trust whatever he says. And I'm just telling you, if you want to change, if you want God to change something in your life, if you need God to change something you believe about yourself, today's the day. Can I ask you guys to stand up? First question, is there any...